Hey everyone. In this video we are going to talk about comparison and logical operators. And in fact throughout all of this chapter we're going to focus a lot on that mysterious boolean uh, data type that I had kind of talked about in the previous chapters uh, but didn't really go into much detail about. Well, here is all of that detail in all of this chapter. This video is going to go a little bit out of order with regards to how the textbook covers things. We're actually going to start at F4.3, uh, continue on through 4.4, 4.5, and 4.6. All of the sections that talk about uh, operators, with the exception of the arithmetic assignment operators, that'll be the last video of this chapter. But it's all about operators and comparisons and all that kind of stuff in this video. And then we'll swing back to cover F4.1 and F4.2 in the next video, but you won't be missing anything the way that I've structured it. So recall that I described a Boolean as a data type where values are either true or false. There's no other Boolean values, they are just true or False. The Boolean sort of existence is a universe where everything is either entirely true or entirely false. And where Boolean values come in handy for us is how we can use them to express the truth values of claims that we make that certain expressions are true. And we call those expressions that we're trying to get a truth value about a boolean expression and by truth value what i mean is essentially is this claim true or is this claim false so we evaluate the claim using visual basic and visual basic gives us the truth value which is a boolean value of either true or false uh, claims are usually created using operators that produce boolean values um, which is what we're talking about in this video. The operators are going to take in one or more values, sort of like the arithmetic operators that we've seen before, and they're going to do some sort of operation following rules that are specific to that operator, and at the end of it you get a truth value based on whether the claim being made using that operator is true or false. Uh, claims can also be Boolean variables themselves, so we can test if a Boolean variable holds the value true or holds the value false. If it holds the value true, Visual Basic evaluates it and says, well, this variable is true. If it holds the value false, Visual Basic evaluates it and says, this variable is false. So that's the kind of mindset that I want to get into when we're working with these Boolean value, uh, variables, Boolean values, all that kind of stuff. Especially as we go on into creating Boolean expressions using the operators that we discuss in this video. The first type of operators that we'll talk about are comparison operators, which serve to make a claim about how two expressions are related to each other. Um, and I have some examples right here. Remember that expressions can actually include values themselves. So 42 could be considered an expression, or 3 could be considered an expression. Also, the variable int x can be considered an expression by itself. We'll also get into more complicated expressions and how they're related to each other, but we don't have to worry about that just yet. Now the comparison operators are going to make these types of comparisons. For example, 42 is not equal to three. That is a claim that specifically involves the relationship between 42 and three. I am claiming that they are not equal to each other. The relationship is one of being not equal. Another claim I can make is zero is less than negative five. My claim is that a relationship between zero and negative five is that zero is less than negative five. I can also claim that int x 
is greater than or equal to 5. And this claim is that not int x as a variable itself, but rather the value that int x holds is greater than or equal to 5. So these are all claims that I can make based on how different expressions are related to each other. In this case, with all these numbers, uh, how they're related to each other in terms of their value and whether those values are greater or less or equal or not equal or all that kind of stuff. Now our arithmetic operators, such as addition and subtraction and multiplication and division and all that kind of stuff, they all evaluate to numerical values, the type of that numerical value being based on the type of their operands. And of course, all the implicit type conversion and all that good stuff. However, um, our comparison operators evaluate to a Boolean value because when I make any of these claims right here, these comparison related claims, if I was claiming this to your face, for example, you could tell me if I'm making a true or false statement. You can tell me if I am correct or incorrect. And that assessment that you give is sort of the idea of the evaluation to a Boolean value that Visual Basic gives. So for example, if I tell Visual Basic that 42 is not equal to three, Visual Basic is going to evaluate that claim and say that it is true. 42 is indeed not equal to 3. I can tell Visual Basic, I am claiming that 0 is less than negative 5. And Visual Basic can evaluate that claim and recognize that it is in fact a false claim. 0 is greater than negative 5, so it cannot be less than negative five. So I gave Visual Basic a false claim. That's the evaluation to the Boolean value of false. I can also tell Visual Basic int x is greater than or equal to five. I can make that claim. And Visual Basic can evaluate that claim and tell me whether it's true or false. Now, when we're just looking at this claim, int x is greater than or equal to 5, well, we don't know whether it's greater than or equal to 5, specifically because we don't know what value is contained within int x. And this will likely be the case when you're programming as well. You don't necessarily know what values are going to be in your variables. Now, if you've defined a constant or something like that, you would know what value is in that constant, specifically because the idea of a constant is to keep a value in it. It's used to represent a value. But your variables, you don't necessarily know what your variables are going to hold. And that's because your variables are likely going to have different values depending on how the user has interacted with your program. And you can predict that. Nobody can actually really fully predict that unless you have a very limiting program where the user can't actually type in any values or something. They can only select options, maybe choose different values from radio buttons or select slash deselect uh, checkboxes, that kind of stuff. And in that case, you could um, theoretically pre-plan every single outcome, but that usually gets pretty annoying pretty fast especially as the number of different combination grows and grows and grows to some factorial level. So we don't usually worry about that. And because of that, we can't really predict what our variables values are going to be. And thus we can't predict what the Boolean value of an evaluated claim involving a variable is actually going to be, but that's okay. We have ways of handling that, and that's actually what we talk about in the following videos for this chapter, as well as some of the upcoming videos in upcoming chapters. Now here are the comparison operators that we're going to be talking about. Um, these all will work great for numeric values, and we'll talk about how 
some of them work with strings in a later video, but these are all the comparison operators for numbers. And also um, some of them actually work for booleans like equal to or not equal to. But what I have right here are all the operations that are possible, all the comparison operations, and the operators that we use in Visual Basic, as well as some examples where I have used the exact same operands to show you the evaluated result and how that evaluated result changes per every operator that we use. The um, equality operator is pretty standard. It essentially evaluates to true if and only if I claim that two operands that have the same value are equal. So for example, when I claim that 3 equals 3, Visual Basic evaluates that and recognizes that it's true. However, any other value, such as 5 or 2, are evaluated to false because they are not equal to 3. Similarly, we have not equal to, which is the sort of complement of equal to. We use two angle brackets um, in order to actually uh, say not equal to, which is a little bit weird, but there's not a great way of typing the not equals to sign on your keyboard, so this will do just fine for our purposes. And of course, as you might expect, the statement evaluates to true if the two operands are not equal to each other. So when the two operands are equal to each other, 3 is not equal to 3 when I make that claim, Visual Basic recognizes that it's false. When they are not equal to each other, such as 3 is not equal to 5, or 3 is not equal to 2, Visual Basic evaluates that to true. Now I want to quickly touch on the equal to operator right here because it is the same as the variable assignment operator which might feel a little bit confusing. And to be completely candid, I, it's not my preferred way of doing equal to. Other programming languages actually use two equal signs right next to each other, so three equals equals five instead. But with Visual Basic, the way that they have set up their language, they can be reasonably sure that they can tell the difference between variable assignment and claiming that two expressions are equal to each other. And I'll show you an example of that later on in this video. But just remember that the equal sign is used for both variable assignment and for checking equality between two operands. And there are rules that dictate whether Visual Basic assumes you are trying to set a variable equal to a value, or if Visual Basic assumes that you're trying to check for equality. Now I want to talk about greater than and greater than or equal to at the same time because they are very similar. For example, if you try to claim that the left operand is greater than the right operand when the right operand is in fact the larger value, that's going to return false. For example, 3 is greater than 5 is going to return false because in fact 5 is greater than 3. 3 is less than 5. Similar for greater than or equal to. Uh, the claim that 3 is greater than or equal to 5 is going to be false. Because 3 is not greater than 5, we can see that up here in the greater than table. And 3 is not equal to 5, which we can see up here in the equal to table. So 3 is greater than or equal to 5 is false because both are not true. 3 is less than 5 and 3 is not equal to 5 because 3 is less than 5. So the whole operand returns or evaluates to false. Another easy comparison point is when the left operand is greater than the right operand. 
for example, when three is greater than two, the statement three is greater than two will evaluate two true. Similarly, three is greater than or equal to two will evaluate to true because three is greater than two. Now three is not equal to two, but that's okay because three is still greater than two. So as long as at least one of those um, conditions is fulfilled, the operand evaluates to true. So three is greater than two, or greater than or equal to two is true, just as three is greater than two is true. Of course, where the two operators uh, differ is when the two operands are the same value. So if we claim that three is greater than three, that is a false claim that evaluates to false because three is the same value as three. So it can't be greater than itself. However, if we say three is greater than or equal to three, that is true. Now, of course, three is not greater than three, but three is equal to three. So because at least one of those conditions holds, the whole statement is true. Three is equal to three, so three is greater than or equal to three. So the whole thing is a true statement. And we have a similar situation with less than versus less than or equal to. I will let you run through the examples yourself as an exercise to see if you feel comfortable with the logic being used for um, evaluating the claims and you know some of the differences between less than or less than or equal to. Now, of course, you can actually do comparison with variables. Because variables hold a value, when we evaluate a comparison that involves a variable, such as, um, let's say, decimal max is greater than 75.65, the decimal literal. When this whole thing is evaluated, the whole claim is evaluated to see if it is true, Visual Basic is going to recognize, okay, I have a greater than or equal to uh, comparison on my hands right here, so I need to check if the left operand is greater than or equal to the right operand. And it will start with the left. It will try to evaluate everything on the left side. And in this case, all it is is just a variable. So Visual Basic will take that variable, go into memory, and find the value that is stored in that locker assigned to that variable name. And it'll grab that value and bring it back and then hold on to it for the upcoming comparison. Then it will check the right side to see if anything needs to be evaluated and nothing really does because it's just the literal 75.65 as a decimal. So then it says, okay, I have my two values. I'm going to see if the left value is greater than or equal to the right value. And it will check that, that uh, resulting you know, evaluation of the claim is going to be based on the value of decimal max. So if decimal max contained the number one, the whole thing would evaluate to false. If it contained the number 100, the whole thing would evaluate to true. And of course, if it contained the number 75.65, it would evaluate to true as well. But that's what's happening when we have variable comparison like that, is it essentially goes into each variable uh, and substitutes that variable for the actual value that that variable contains. And then once it has the value on the left side and the value on the right side, it's able to actually do the comparison. Another fun example is int on hand is less than int ordered, that whole claim. Um, that's a fun one because Visual Basic actually has to do a little bit of evaluation on both the left-hand side of the operand and the right-hand side of the operand. The evaluation is pretty easy because all it has to do is get the values out of each variable and then compare those values to see if the left hand value is truly less than the right hand value. You know, 
the results being determined by the runtime values of each variable. But that's what's happening on both sides is it's checking to make sure it's evaluating everything on the left side and then it checks to evaluate everything on the right side. And once everything is evaluated and it ends up with values on both the left and right side, it's able to compare them from there. Now, I've highlighted a string state right here because this is one of those cases where using the equal sign for um, comparison like this is really tricky. Um, because it looks like I'm trying to assign the value of the string containing IL uppercase into the variable string state. So that would be a little bit tricky, except for the fact that we would never actually have an entire line of code that's just uh, the comparison string state equals the value IL we would actually try to do something with that comparison. If we just had the comparison by itself, we would essentially be doing the work for no reason, calculating the value and then throwing it out for no reason. Which is why Visual Basic can be certain that it knows whether or not you're using the equality operator or whether you're using the variable assignment operator because this is not going to be by itself. We'll see one use of the equality operator where it's not by itself in the upcoming videos when we talk about selection structures, but another use we might see is when we actually combine variable analysis or variable, um, you know, checks of equality with variable assignment. For example, when we assign Boolean is Illinois, the value of the evaluation of the claim, the variable string state contains the string IL. What happens here is pretty much what we've seen happens in um, any variable assignment where everything after the variable assignment is evaluated first, string state equals the string contains Illinois. We evaluate that, we get the truth value of that, and then we replace the this whole expression, this whole Boolean expression here with its truth value, and then we essentially have Boolean is Illinois equals false, or Boolean is Illinois equals true, and then that value gets set into Boolean is Illinois. When you start out a line of code with variable equals, Visual Basic will always assume that you're talking about variable assignment. Otherwise, if you have it part of the way through as part of a long expression or as part of a selection structure, which again, we'll talk about in upcoming videos, it will assume that you're checking for equality because variable assignment must always start with variable equals or you know dim variable as type equals that's also a valid variable assignment but those are the only two ways that you ever see variable assignment is when they start the line of code everything else is assumed to be uh, testing for equality doing a equality comparison like that now, the other interesting thing to note right here are these two um, string comparisons. String state is equal to Illinois, that first claim that I talked about before, and the claim uh, string continue is not equal to the letter N, uppercase. Uh, these are a little bit tricky because of the nature of strings, which is why I have an entire video specifically about how string comparisons work, uh, focusing on checking for equality and checking for inequality. So essentially, you know, put string comparisons on the back burner, keep it simmering, but you don't have to look at it. Sort of like a nice soup. 
Um, we'll talk about that later. It's very straightforward for numbers. Uh, pretty straightforward for booleans as well. But strings get a little bit trickier, and we will have to talk about that as its own thing. Now, the next type of operator that produces a Boolean value that is used to um, evaluate a claim, that next type is known as the logical operator. Now, these operators are similar to arithmetic operators. Arithmetic operators take in two numbers and they produce a number, usually of the same type, although that implicit type promotion stuff that we talked about before does apply. The comparison operators, however, took in two values of basically any type that we're worried about and produced a Boolean value. So the operands, the two types of values that it was taking in, those operand types weren't necessarily Boolean. So sometimes you get two different types that then produce a Boolean through this comparison. However, logical operators strictly take Boolean operands. They take in one or two Booleans, and then they do some sort of uh, calculation based on the rules of that operand, and they will either evaluate to true or false. Take in two Booleans, and you get a boolean back out. Uh, these logical operators also form what's known in a lot of circles and especially in more academic settings as boolean algebra because it is a type of algebra that you're performing on these boolean values, on these true or false values. And the first operator that I'm going to talk about is the not operator, which you actually type just like this, not boolean p, if boolean p is some boolean variable that we have. Now what I have right here is a truth table where we have um, the truth values of any boolean variables that are involved in all this, and then we also look at the truth values of whatever operation applied to those variables. For example, uh, boolean p, if boolean p is true, not boolean p is going to be false. We call this a negation operator. It's the negation of the boolean value. If we negate a true value, we're taking the opposite of it, and the opposite of true is false in the case of Booleans. Similarly, if Boolean P is false, then not Boolean P is true. The opposite of a false statement is a true statement. So the not operator takes in one Boolean operand on its right side, and all it does is it evaluates what that operand is, and then whatever that value happens to be, whether it's true or false, it negates it, turning it into false or true, respectively. Our first example that we can look at is the claim of not true. And these are still claims, by the way. Not true is still a claim. I'm saying the statement not true is a true statement which is a little bit of a weird thing to say, but this statement, you know, the negation of true is a true statement. That's the claim that I'm making right here. And the visual basic evaluates that and says, well, hey, the negation of true is actually false and false is not a true statement. So the evaluated claim is false. Another example we have is not three equals five. So I am claiming that the negation of the claim that three equals five is true. If I was just claiming th the statement three equals five, Visual Basic would say, well, that is a 
false statement. So 3 equals 5 evaluates to false. And then I say, well, I am claiming that the negation of false is true. And then Visual Basic evaluates that and says, well, the negation of false is true. So claiming that it is a true statement is true because true is true. That's kind of the logic that's happening behind the scenes right there. Another way we can think about it is I am claiming that the operand is false. I am claiming when I say not three equals five, I am telling Visual Basic, I claim that the statement three equals five is a false statement. And Visual Basic will evaluate that to true. It might be a little bit more of a straightforward way of thinking about it, although it's not technically how, the way Visual Basic thinks about it, but it's more straightforward for human thinking. Now notice, when I say not 3 equals 5 like this, that's essentially the same thing as saying 3 is not equal to 5, isn't it? So we do actually have this really interesting property where negating a particular comparison is actually the same thing as saying a different comparison. Negating three, or negating the equality uh, comparison right here is the same thing as just claiming the inequality comparison, which is pretty interesting if you ask me. In fact, all of the comparison operators have this relationship with not where you can negate one comparison operator and get functionally the equivalent of another comparison operator. For example, um, negating an equality gives you an inequality. We've already talked about that. Negating greater than gives you less than or equal to. Negating greater than or equal to gives you less than. Negating less than gives you greater than or equal to. Negating less than or equal to gives you greater than. And negating inequality gives you equality. And what I would do is pause the video and test all of these claims for yourself to see if you believe me about this. Uh, because these are testable. You can look at these examples and evaluate the truth value of each one for both the negation of one comparison and the equivalent other comparison, associated comparison in this sense. Whether 3 equals 5 negated is the same as 3 is not equal to 5, and so on and so forth. So I would do that, especially with the uh, greater than, less than type operators. Those are really interesting ones because um, of their relationship with the, you know, say negating greater than is associated with less than or equal to, or negating less than or equal to is associated with greater than, right? So that association can be pretty interesting to look at. Highly recommend that you do these examples. And then we also have a double negative rule with negation, where if you negate a negation, you end up with functionally the original statement. So, you know, I take the original statement, Boolean P, or whatever expression gets put into Boolean P. We can say, you know, Boolean P is equal to some crazy comparison expression that we want to check, and then we do all this not stuff with it, however you want to think about it. But the statement, or the expression Boolean P is a claim that Boolean P is a true statement. And when it holds true, Visual Basic evaluates it to true. And when it holds false, Visual Basic evaluates it to false. Not Boolean P is the statement that I am claiming Boolean P is actually false. Now, if Boolean P holds true, it's not false, so the whole statement is false. However, if I claim that Boolean P is false using the not operator, and then Boolean P does actually hold false, that's where not Boolean P becomes true. Now, not not Boolean P is a little interesting. You could think of it like I'm saying, I am claiming that the claim that Boolean P is false is itself false. 
I'm claiming that the negation of Boolean P is false. Well, the negation of Boolean P is false when Boolean P is true. Only when Boolean P is true. So the only time that the claim that the negation of Boolean P is false, the only time that claim is true is when Boolean P is true. Similarly, if I claim that the claim that Boolean P is false is false, but the claim that Boolean P is false is actually true because Boolean P was false all along, so the negation is true, then my claim that the negation is false is a false claim because the negation was true. It gets a little bit complicated. You kind of have to th think about it, you know, like sit down and really work it through your brain. You could also think about it like how negative numbers work, where if you take a positive number, let's say the number one, and multiply it by negative one, you get negative one. And then you multiply it by negative one again, you get positive one. That double negation canceling itself out. That's also how it works, at least in the English language, where you can say a double negation. And for the most part, it's the same thing as saying it's straightforward, although the double negation can be used for things like emphasis or whatever in order to convey a slightly different meaning. But where the whole thing is true in the end, it gets complicated when we're talking about human language because human language is so complex. But the, the idea of the double negative being equal to the original statement kind of shows up a lot in life and it shows up in computer science as well. All right, well, at this point, I would consider this a checkpoint for the video. Um, if you are having a little bit of trouble understanding how not is working, take some time, work through it, maybe work through some of the examples that I provided, maybe even try making your own examples and see if you can convince yourself of it or ask for help and I'd be happy to help you. Once you feel more comfortable with not, then that's a good time to move on to the next operators. So next, I'm going to talk about the AND operator, which has two operands, one on the left and one on the right. I'm going to refer to those as Boolean P and Boolean Q. Of course, they're both Booleans. Now, the AND operator is making the claim I believe that Boolean P and Boolean Q are both true. I think both of them are true. So Visual Basic is going to have to check Boolean P's value to see if it's true, and also Boolean Q's value to see if it is true. Now, the only way for me to be correct is if Visual Basic discovers that Boolean P is true and Boolean Q is true because my claim is that they both are true. So they both must be true for me to be correct about that. If Boolean Q is false, then the whole statement is false because both of them are not true. At least one of them is false. If Boolean P is, tr is false, then the whole statement is false because both of them are not. It is not true that both of them are true. One of them is false. So the whole claim is false. And of course, if both of them are false, well, I'm, I'm definitely, you know, I definitely look like a fool because my claim that both of them are true was proved false in two ways. Although it only really needed to be fa proved false in one way, right? Because we know that if at least one of them is false, then both of them are false. Or not both of them are false, my apologies. If at least one of them is false, then the entire statement is false. We only really need to know if one of them is false, right? But when we use the AND operator, Visual Basic does check both of them because it's very thorough. Our next operator is the and also operator. And well, it looks pretty similar to and, doesn't it? I mean, the truth table is exactly the same. 
when Boolean P and Boolean Q are true, both of them are true, then Boolean P and also Boolean Q is true. But in every other case, at least one of them is false, so the whole claim is false. So functionally, it's identical to Boolean P and Boolean Q. You get the same results no matter what, so what's the difference between and 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 also? Before I get into that, I will say that it's a very um, important point to note that when we have two things that have the same truth table like this, where it, when they are true or when they have the same values for every possible combination of the input variables here, then we consider them to essentially be the same Boolean expression. So Boolean P and Boolean Q, the claim that both of them are true, is the same expression as Boolean P and also Boolean Q, the claim that both of them are true. Boolean P is true and also Boolean Q is true, right? So functionally, they will always give the same result. Visual, Visual Basic will always um, output the same expressions or the same, the same value when it evaluates the expressions. So why use and also type all those extra words when you could just use and? Well, the reason why is something called short circuit evaluation, which is a actually very handy, um, you know, feature of a lot of different programming languages. A lot of them do it automatically, but Visual Basic actually has a very nice feature where you can specify when you want short circuit evaluation to happen versus when you don't want short circuit evaluation to happen. Um, well, I guess I should explain what short circuit evaluation is. So let me do that. If we take a look at this expression right here, this is a variable assignment expression in this case. Int result equals zero times and all of this stuff right here. Now, I, I want to say that this is not an example of short circuit evaluation. I don't believe that short circuit evaluation actually happens in any of the arithmetic operators or anything like that. But the reason why I do want to include this example is because, well, we've talked about how when we don't know the value of a variable, it's really hard to figure out what that expression actually is ahead of time, right? I mean, we don't know what value int mystery holds. That's going to possibly be any number of possible values at runtime when the user is actually using the application. So how could I possibly know what int result actually is? And especially, you know, if I can't calculate uh, the square root of pi using double pi to the power of one half, how am I supposed to figure that out? Well, I have a secret trick up that's up my sleeve, and that's knowing that multiplying anything by zero gives you the value of zero. So no matter what this is, int result is going to get the value zero because all of this gobbledygook is going to eventually get multiplied by zero. So Visual Basic could do all this calculation and figure out the exact value of everything on the right side of the multiplication and then multiply it by zero, but it doesn't really matter because it's being multiplied by zero. As people, you and I can look at the zero on the left side of the equation and say, well, I, I immediately know that this whole thing is going to be zero because it's multiplied by zero. Like there's no, um, there's nothing else outside of the parentheses that would be outside of the multiplication. The entire expression is multiplication by zero. So it must become zero. We know that. We can look at it. We can see that whole um, number zero that's right there and immediately understand, well, it doesn't matter what's on the left, what's on the right side because the right side is all contained in parentheses and will be multiplied by zero. So it's just zero. That's the idea of short circuit evaluation is if we did that, but for Boolean values. 
So there's my bullet points that are saying exactly what I just said. Zero times anything is zero. So who cares what int mystery is and who cares about evaluating all this complicated stuff? Int result must be zero no matter what. So we could theoretically put zero into int result and just throw everything else out if we really wanted to optimize our code. And probably there's a lot of programming language stuff that does that. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some weird stuff with C++ that does that kind of thing, but that would be really risky if a programming language tried to do that. We can do it as humans because we're able to critically think about it, but regardless. Short circuit evaluation is pretty much the exact same thing, where we're using the rules of operators to sort of cheat our calculation. Sort of like how we were able to say, well, by the rules of multiplication, zero times anything is zero. In this case, we're using knowledge about not only the operator itself, such as the AND operator, but also the left-hand side of the AND operator to avoid evaluating the right-hand side. For some of these uh, logical operators, these uh, Boolean algebra operators, if we know, you know, Visual Basic will operate, will evaluate the left-hand side before the right-hand side. Theoretically, if Visual Basic evaluated the left-hand side and realized, oh, this, this is one of those special values where I immediately know the answer no matter what the right-hand side is, it has the capability of actually throwing out the right-hand side completely. So that's the idea of short circuit evaluation with this. For example, if we take the statement boolean p equals false and boolean q. This is a variable assignment where we're trying to assert the claim that false and boolean q is a true statement. We're trying to assert the claim that both false is true and boolean q is true. And then we're trying to put that value into boolean p. However, we know that an AND operator, when it makes the claim that both operands are true, well, if at least one of those operators is false, then the entire statement is false. The entire claim that both are true is false because one of them is false. And we know that false is false, right? Boolean Q, we don't know the value of this. It could be true, it could be false. It doesn't matter because False is false, which means that it is not true that both of these operands are true. So this whole thing is false, and we know the whole thing is false already without having to evaluate what Boolean Q is. We know that Boolean P is going to get the value false because that's what this statement is going to evaluate to. So because the result must be false, it can't be anything but false. It's, there's no way for it to be true. Who cares about what the right-hand side is, right? We don't need to worry about Boolean Q, and we especially wouldn't need to worry about if this was a really complicated expression that involves a lot of comparisons and arithmetic and all that kind of stuff. Who cares about it? We could save ourselves a lot of time by recognizing, well, this is false on the left side, so the whole thing, the whole rest of it can't be thrown out. It's just false. So the difference between and also and and is that and does not use short circuit evaluation and evaluates the left hand side and the right hand side no matter what it goes through the trouble of doing all of those calculations fully completing them and then comparing the results and also uses short circuit evaluation which means that when it detects the left hand side is false it can just replace the entire thing with false so here's our truth table again, except I added another column that actually makes it not a truth table anymore. But this essentially says when short circuit evaluation is applied in an and also expression. And essentially it is applied when the left hand it is applied when the left hand side is false. Because, you know, and also evaluates Boolean P first, when it recognizes that Boolean P is false, it already knows the result, that the result will be false. So it 
doesn't even worry about Boolean Q. It doesn't care if it's true or false. It just knows that it's false. So short circuit evaluation is applied. However, when Boolean P is true, it doesn't have that guarantee. So it has to evaluate Boolean Q to see if it's true or false. And you can see right here when short circuit evaluation is not applied, there are cases where it's true and there are cases where it's false, the whole statement. And also blindly evaluates the left-hand side first and then applies short circuit evaluation if the left-hand side is false. It can't tell ahead of time if we have the left-hand side is true and the right-hand side is false. It has no idea of knowing that until it actually evaluates both the left-hand side and then sees it's true and then evaluates the right-hand side. Now, um, and also, you can think of it as saying, I am asserting that Boolean P is, Q is true and also Boolean Q is true. And that sort of emphasis on I'm asserting Boolean P is true. Oh, and also Boolean Q is true, right? You know, the, the, um, the afterthought of Boolean Q, that emphasis on Boolean P really shows that short circuit evaluation thing where it has so much emphasis on Boolean P that if Boolean P is false, um, then the whole thing can just be thrown out. That, that emphasis that comes with and also signifies that it does short circuit evaluation. Now, short circuit evaluation is super efficient because you're not calculating that right hand side. You don't have to worry about all that computation, especially if there's a lot of computation on the right hand side and the left hand side is, you know, it's, it's whatever, but you only need to calculate the right, the left hand side if it evaluates to false in the end. So it's really efficient to do short circuit evaluation uh, whenever you're able to, which is not all the time because sometimes short circuit evaluation can be bad. There are instances, and we may not even come across it in this class, but there are instances where the right hand side might have some kind of side effect that must happen no matter what that result is. For example, if the right hand side calls some kind of procedure that displays a picture to the user. If the right hand side is responsible for displaying a picture to the user and then also somehow gets a Boolean value out of whatever is going on on the right hand side, well, if we do short circuit evaluation and the left hand side is false, then the right hand side gets completely thrown out, which means the code is never run, which means the picture to the user is never displayed, which could be bad if we're always supposed to display the picture to the user, right? That's an example of when short circuit evaluation can actually fail. It can also be bad if the right hand side is involved with storing data or giving data to the user, either directly or through some procedure or something like that. If it has to happen no matter what, don't use short circuit evaluation. So the summary here is that if you absolutely need the right hand side evaluated every single time because something really important happens, use AND. Otherwise, you can use AND also. And AND also is probably the default one that you will be using because of that efficiency. Um, that's what we're going to use going forward every time we are able to and in the times where we're absolutely not able to use and also because of that right hand side important calculation or action or whatever thing that's when we substitute it out with and and i talked about how short circuit evaluation here is a choice whereas in other programming languages it happens automatically whether you want it to or not that actually can be a pretty um a, a, a pretty big problem in other programming languages if programmers aren't careful with that. So we're lucky that Visual Basic gives us these really helpful tools where we have the choice to make short circuit evaluation like this. Now, the next um, operator that we'll be talking about is a little bit of a throwback, at least for me, to my childhood. Because my mom would ask me a question 
where she would want me to make a choice. For example, do you want pizza or tacos or burgers for dinner? And me being a foodie, well, I loved all of those foods, right? So I would say yes. That sounded like a fine thing for me to say because, well, any of those options sound good, right? So because none of them sound bad, or because like at least one of those options sounds good, right? I like pizza. I like tacos. I like burgers, right? It made sense to me that I could just say yes and uh, communicate that I am good with anything. Uh, my mom did unfortunately see that as me being a smart aleck, and I quickly learned that I should assume every or question like this is an exclusive or, unless otherwise directed, where you can only make one of those choices. Uh, when I later went on to study computer science, I learned about the OR operator and I felt vindicated because the OR operator worked exactly the same way that I thought as a kid. Where the OR operator says that a statement is true so long as at least one of the opera operands themselves is true. It could be both and it's totally great and fo fine and cool if it's both of them. But even if it's just one of them, that's okay. That's what the OR operator is saying. I am asserting that Boolean P or Boolean Q is true. I am asserting that at least one of Boolean P or Boolean Q is true. It's an inclusive OR because it's okay if only one of them is true, as opposed to an exclusive OR where only one of them can be true, but if multiple of them are true if someone said yes to both of them if i said yes to pizza and hot dog or hot dogs and burgers and tacos and whatever right that would be not valid an exclusive or would be not valid but an inclusive or would be valid and that's how it works here it's an inclusive or if boolean p is true the entire statement is true if boolean q is true the entire statement is true the only way for this statement, at least one of Boolean P or Boolean Q is true. The only way for that to be a false statement, the only way for me to be lying to Visual Basic if I said that to their face, would be if both of them evaluated to false. So if I claim, hey, I think at least one of Boolean P or Boolean Q is true, Visual Basic evaluates them and they're both false, they say, you are a liar because both of them are false, so the entire statement is a false one and you lied to me made a false claim and then I apologize and we you know, work it out and try to move forward with our lives. And OR also has its short circuit evaluation uh, partner, which is OR ELSE. The OR ELSE statement says, I am claiming that Boolean P is true or else Boolean Q is true. The claim is that Boolean P is true. If it's not true, then Boolean Q must be true. That's the claim. And again, there's the emphasis on Boolean P. There's the emphasis on the left-hand side because of short circuit evaluation. If or else notices that Boolean P is true, well, it knows that the entire thing must be true because it's at least one of them being true, right? So if Boolean P is true, and at least one of them has to be true for the statement to be valid, then it doesn't have to worry about Boolean Q's value. It doesn't matter if Boolean Q is true or false, the whole thing is true. So it can just throw Boolean Q out completely. However, if Boolean P is false, then there's no guarantee that the whole statement is true or that the whole statement is false, because the only way for it to be false is for both Boolean P and Boolean Q to be false. So Boolean P is false, then or else actually has to evaluate Boolean Q and see if it's true or false. And at that point, if Boolean Q is true, the whole statement is true. If Boolean Q is false, the whole statement is false. So short circuit evaluation is not applied. And here's the exclusive or 
that in my anecdote my mom was working under and probably how most people work under when they say something using or if you're asking someone to make a choice between a bunch of different options you're asking them to make exactly one choice right if they make multiple choices that might not be valid it complicates things and you kind of have to do some discussion to kind of figure out what the actual choice is well that is what an exclusive or is an exclusive or is true when only one of uh, the boolean p or boolean q is true one of the operands has to be true if both of them are true it's false if both of them are false it's false exactly one has to be true so you can also think about it as it's true when the left side is not equal to the right side. It's sort of like an inequality for Boolean values. For example, when Boolean P is true, well, we have to figure out if Boolean Q is true or false. If we know Boolean P is true, we have to evaluate Boolean Q and see, okay, is it true? If so, the X or the exclusive or statement is false. If it's false, however, the entire exclusive or statement is true. I'm claiming that only one of these is true. If Boolean P is false, well, we still have to evaluate Boolean Q to see if it's true or false. If Boolean Q is true, the whole thing is true. If Boolean Q is false, the whole thing is false. You'll notice that no matter what value Boolean P has, we still have to evaluate Boolean Q to see if it matches Boolean P or if it's different than Boolean P. So because of that, there's no short circuit evaluation. We have to check every time if they are not equal to each other. All right, I'd consider this another checkpoint because we are moving on to actual applications of these uh, logical operators. So if at any point in here you, you don't feel comfortable with what any of these operators are doing, again, I would stop. I would maybe try to do some examples, maybe using the truth tables that I wrote up even, and try to figure out where you are having a hard time understanding things and reach out to me or post in the discussion boards uh, because these operators are going to be really really important for everything else coming up all right so one really cool use that we can do with an operator is specify a range so for example what i have right here is the beginnings of a statement that's meant to be true when the value of double hours is between 0 and 40. For example, you know, we're working in a time tracker kind of um, program or application or whatever. And we're trying to see whether an employee has actually come into work, so they've worked more than zero hours on a particular day. But we're also trying to match, you know, employees that haven't, worked overtime because you know if they've worked between zero and 40 hours that's one particular um you know set of actions to do maybe we we're counting them as part-time and we have to assign a certain pay rate to them and all that kind of stuff however if they work uh like over 40 hours or yeah if they work over 40 hours then at that point they're might be considered full-time or working overtime or all that kind of stuff and then we also have to factor in like overtime pay and all that kind of stuff so this beginning of a boolean expression is going to be true if that employee has worked between zero exclusive and 40 inclusive hours now if they've worked 32 hours this sub expression double hours is greater than zero is going to be true and this sub expression double hours is less than or equal to 40 is also going to be true if they've worked zero hours this is false double hours is greater than zero is a false claim but double hours is less than or equal to 40 is a true claim but we would want this whole expression to be false because they haven't worked between zero and 40 hours exclusive inclusive similarly if they've worked 50 hours Claiming that they've worked more than zero hours is correct, but claiming that they've worked less than or equal to 40 hours is incorrect. So we have false on the left and true on the right. The whole thing should be false because they've worked 
um, more than 40 hours, they've worked outside of that bound. So as an exercise, what Boolean operator should we put to connect these two sub-expressions in order to make a claim that is true when an employee has worked the right amount of time and false when they have worked either zero hours or worked overtime. Similarly here, we have the beginnings of an expression that explicitly checks for employees that have worked an invalid amount of time. So it is true when an employee hasn't worked at all or if they have worked overtime. And it's false if they've worked between zero and 40 hours. For example, say if we're trying to like check to find employees who have not worked the correct amount of time so that we can handle certain cases like, you know, overtime or uh, saying, like giving an alert to call them and say, hey, please actually come into work because we have hired you and you missed your shift or whatever. Um, so this whole statement needs to be connected by a Boolean operator, just as above, in order to make it true when an employee has worked an invalid amount of time and false when they've worked a valid amount of time. For example, if they have worked zero hours or somehow they have worked negative hours even, however that might be possible, maybe they are deliberately, you know, if they work at a Wendy's or something, they are deliberately deconstructing hamburgers and uncooking them somehow, like throwing them in the freezer, right? That might be negative hours of work because they're undoing productivity, whatever. But if they have worked, not worked at all or done negative work, this sub-expression on the left, the claim that double hours is less than or equal to zero would be true. Um, but the claim that double hours is greater than 40 would be false. However, this whole thing should still be true because it's an invalid number. So this double hours is less than or equal to zero being true signifies that the whole thing is an invalid number. So our statement that is true for invalid numbers should then be true. What, op what operator do we need for that? Similarly, if they work 50 hours, if they work overtime, um, double hours is less than or equal to zero, that claim is false, but the claim that double hours is greater than 40, that claim is true, right? So 50 is an invalid number. We know that because it's outside of the bounds of between zero and 40. Uh, the left-hand side is false, the right-hand side is true. Because the right-hand side is true, we know that the whole thing should be true. So what operator do we use? And then, of course, if they work 32 hours, left-hand side is false because it's greater than zero. Right-hand side is false because it's less than or equal to 40. Even if uh, they work 40 hours, right? This would be false on the right-hand side because it's not greater than 40. 40 is not greater than 40, it is equal to 40. So when both of them are false, the whole thing should be false. What logical operator do we use? Well, for the first one, I would use and also because both of these have to be true. When something has two conditions and both of those conditions have to be true, that's where I would use an and also. Uh, and also because in this case, you know, short circuit evaluation is totally fine. Similarly, where in cases where at least one of them has to be true, uh, I would use or else by default. Now, in this case, we could also use x or specifically because there's no way for a number to be both less than or equal to zero and greater than 40. So using x or would actually give us the same result, funny enough. But we don't, there's no benefit that it gives us to use x or instead of or. And in fact, using or else gives us a benefit because of short circuit evaluation. So that's why I would choose or else instead of or or x or. Now, of course, we have the reasoning behind using and also here. Uh, true when both double hours is greater than zero is true and double hours is less than or equal to 40 is true. So if it's true when both of them are true, then we need um, to use and also. So because it's true when this is true and this is true, it's true when it's between zero and 40. Uh, and of course, if it's less than or equal to zero, we get short circuit evaluation because that's false. And if it's greater than zero, 40, that's false. Similarly, um, 
the second statement is true when double hours is less than or equal to zero is true, or if double hours is greater than 40 is true. Um, so it's true when double hours is not in between 40 and zero. We have when it's, it, we have up here true when it's between 40 and zero and down here true when it's not between 40 and zero. And then the explanation of the short circuit evaluation. And of course, um, you know, how both of them are false right here. Now, a cool thing to note about this is how previously I said that the or statement was um, true when double hours was outside of the range of 0 and 40, which means it's the opposite of the and statement, which is true when double hours is between 0 and 40, right? So the or statement is equivalent to saying not double hours is greater than zero and also double hours is less than or equal to 40. I, I am claiming that because of a really cool rule where we can actually sort of quote unquote distribute the not across an and also to turn it into an or else and then you just negate the operands of the or else in order to get our or else statement. So the negation of our and also statement up, you know, that we had before is equal to, or, you know, functionally equivalent to the or else statement. And you can test that yourself if you want. You can test the equivalency of all three numbers using numbers like zero and 32 and 50 and 40 and all that kind of stuff. It will always give you the same truth value because these are equivalent. They're equivalent because of what's known as De Morgan's laws, where if you not Boolean P and Boolean Q, you get not Boolean P or not Boolean Q. Similarly, if you negate Boolean P or Boolean Q, you get not Boolean P and not Boolean Q. That's exactly what we had going on before where we negated an AND statement and then we got not the left side or not the right side. Not Boolean P, where Boolean P is equivalent to double hours is greater than zero, or not Boolean Q, where double hours is less than or equal to 40, uh, is Boolean Q. And then we were able to actually negate that further because of what we know about negating operands earlier in this video. And that's how we got this statement right here. So De Morgan's laws can be really helpful in actually, you know, helping you write concise um, Boolean expressions. They're not required for you to know. I'm not going to ever test you on this. The textbook doesn't even mention them as far as I know, but they're really helpful in order to make really easy to understand, um, really easy to understand Boolean expressions without having to worry about, say, knots on the left side and knots on the right side and get all this complicated stuff. You can just say not this whole thing. Or you could go the other way where you, uh, you're trying to negate an entire statement and then you transfer that using De Morgan's laws into not left side, not right side, and then not left side, not right side actually resolves into something relatively simple like the comparison operators did. So it's a useful tool if you want to take advantage of that. That's my uh, present from me to you if you want to use that to make your life easier. Now, here are all of the operators we have talked about in this class so far. All the arithmetic operators, the comparison operators, and the logical operators. And all of them have their precedence. So we have sorted them into their rightful place in the big, ugly, PEMDAS kind of thing that we have going on. Now, if you thought doing a uh, acronym similar to Please Excuse My Dear Aunt Sally for the arithmetic operators in Visual Basic was going to be complicated, I, oh my god, I would be so impressed if someone made a really good one for 
all of the operators in this table right here, including the comparison, including not, and also, and, or, else, or, and XOR, right? That's a lot. But the skinny of it is all the arithmetic operators happen first, and you're familiar with how all of those work. After all the arithmetic has been done in an expression, if there are any comparison operators, and remember, when we're using the equal sign here, we're not talking about the assignment operator. That actually comes after every single calculation has been done. That's the last thing that ever happens. This is the comparison equal sign right here. So all the comparisons happen after arithmetic has been done. The arithmetic gets resolved so that we know what values we're actually trying to compare, and then we compare those values. And we do the comparison operators left to right. Sort of like when we resolve multiplication and division in the same step, or addition and subtraction in the same step. Comparison happens left to right. Once all the comparison is done, then we have all the logical operators. And the idea with this is that if there are any comparisons that are being compared using, or being um, not compared, if the comparisons are being worked with using logical operators, for example, if we're saying that x is greater than 0 and x is less than or equal to 40, right? We evaluate those comparisons first, and then we do all the logical work with those Boolean values to see, you know, what the resulting truth value is. That's the logic behind doing all of that. So logical operators come last. With logical operators, we start with negation. Negation always happens first. If you want to do negation of a complicated um, expression, like what we had with uh, De Morgan's laws, right? Negation of an end expression, then you have to put that in parentheses. Parentheses work just fine for Boolean and comparison stuff, just as they do for arithmetic. So once we handle nots, then we handle and alsos and ands. They're the same operation, so there's no reason not to handle them at the same time. Uh, we handle those left to right, and of course they are true if all operands are true. After and is handled, then we do or. So and first and then or. Uh, you can think of and handling the ands and, and also and stuff as like a kind of multiplication. And is actually the Boolean equivalent of multiplication. And then we do or, which is kind of the Boolean equivalent of addition, right? Because uh, false plus true. I realize I'm thinking about this in terms of binary, which is how we handle it in computer science. Um, in binary, we count zero as false and one is true. So if we had false and true, that'd be zero times one, which is zero. That's multiplication. Uh, if we had false or true, that's the equivalent of zero plus one, which is one, which is true, which is sort of like addition there. That, that's kind of how it can be thought of regardless. Um, all the ors come after ands, and or else's and ors are all handled left to right. You know, so long as there's no parentheses that are being run into, every single or and or else will be handled left to right, with short circuit evaluation being applied as necessary. But, you know, that is how that works. And then finally, we have the exclusive or, which is true if exactly one operand is true. All right, it's a beefy video, but this video is really important for everything else that we're covering, not just in this chapter, but going on for the rest of the class. Uh, these comparison and logical operators being able to make claims about things are really useful because, you know, we can make claims about user input values or about the results of procedures or all that kind of stuff and test those claims. And what we're going to get into in the following videos is do certain things based on whether those claims are true or false. So that's the direction that we're going with this. This is a really important video. If you're still having trouble with any of the topics in here, do reach out to me before going into the, um, following videos for all this.